uh, powerful uh, uh, vision of domination. Yeah, that that's basically what happened. Is they they had a plan, and Jam Japan Dota Rejects plan happened sooner. Yeah. And you know, people say Spectre, oh my God, so strong. Oh, just push R. Oh, you win. G G G G. But you know that this is a prime example last game yeah. of exactly what happens when you uh, when you play it right and you either shut down the lane, which the Omni Knight was obviously able to do single handedly, which is sort of the worst case scenario, or you group up and make that happen with multiple people. Uh, so either one of those options is good, and they found one of them. Yeah, and they decided to go with the Outworld Devourer again, which um, last game kind of had that feeling, um, you know, of lacking purpose of just kind of being like a good pick, but I don't know, not necessarily being able to synergize with the team. It is such a good hero, though, that of course maybe it is just the setup and, and how things went down. So they decided this time to grab the Alchemist was something that was picked out for a ban by Japan Dota Rejects last game. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll have to see now what they decide to go uh, in terms of support to pick up with that. And Japan Dota Rejects uh, pick up Faceless Void, also Ooh. something that was in the ban list um, last time, and we haven't quite seen yet. So yeah, yeah, I think yeah. they they've definitely prioritized Faceless Void as not as a pick but as a ban, and that's uh, going to prevent them from picking it, obviously. <laughs> and uh, Cap Nami's over here, and yeah, Faceless Void. Yeah. This finally got through. I played Faceless Void off lane a couple times for the first time the other day, and he's so strong, base damage. Yeah. Such good last hitting potential, able to get those RNG bashes. Time walk is just so good. I, I feel kind of dirty with uh, him and in, in the new version of him, but he's definitely yeah. one that I should reincorporate into my hero pool, especially as I try to claw my way out of the pit. <laughs> uh, MMR. Yeah, you know? give him a try. He feels really tanky. Like it's such a weird dynamic for a lane. To be able to at level one essentially make it so that their has, harass means nothing. And I'm going to interrupt myself because the draft's going pretty quick. I uh, grabbed a witch doctor yeah, into an all. enigma. Yeah, I like the uh, clink span, as that's something that definitely you know faceless void locks everybody in place, and clink just hammers away. Um, Enchantress with something else that's similar, but of course them picking up enigma is kind of a different twist. And you know, I mean, Enchantress preferred as a, uh, I guess, an off laner instead of a jungler. Um, yeah. And gyro uh, targeting the safe lane ban as well. So, yeah, exactly. I'm I'm sort of glad to see some of those bans on heroes that I think are not as fun to watch or get overpicked. You know, Gyro he doesn't just really get overpicked, but he does get banned a lot. But I, I don't know. Like, eh, maybe it maybe okay with Gyro these days. He just used to get overplayed so much. I'm just like, oh, I don't want to see Gyro. But yeah, uh, right. but yeah, they banned the Omni Knight. Don't even want to deal with that uh, on the other team. Even though that was Japan Dota Rejects that were using Omni Knight last time, they didn't want Amakase to be able to come back with that uh, because it's pretty good against Faceless Void. Yeah, but yeah Juggernaut. Juggernaut that because that's, that's brutality. Yeah, and uh, and that, oh, and that's the other thing. Uh, of course, Guardian Angel from Omni Knight being so good against Omni Slash. So that's that's the appropriate ban there. I O being a pick here. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. I wonder what they're going to run in the off lane. Um, you know, this is one of those scenarios. It's, weird. it's a weird kind of lineup that's forming right now. Yeah, the the possibilities here are pretty good. You got uh, Alchemist already has pretty good regen, obviously with his ult, but now you're giving him kind of flat damage reduction on overcharge. And then on top of that, you have the combination of Witch Doctor and Io being the double heal, kind of like the Dazzle. Uh, we were talking about Io, Io Dazzle yesterday. And uh, so it's pretty good, uh, you know. And out, the same thing, Outworld Devour could use the move speed. It's so important to prioritize move speed on Outworld Devour, such that some people even go like Sanj and Yasha, but everyone gets drums on Outworld Devour for that exact reason. The stats, of course, are nice, but that positioning element. And wow, two quick picks, Earthshaker and Vengeful Spirit. Well, just straight up draft wise, I, I kind of favor Japan Dota Rejects here. Uh, I don't know how you feel about. Uh, Looking at the drafts, um, not even you know taking into consideration the execution that we saw last game. Yeah, um, we we have a DC no pause yet, which is kind of surprising. There we go. Okay, let me run down the rosters real quick. Already Ume back in the game. Fabia on the Alchemist this time. Nubao on the IO. Louis on Outworld Devour. Ren on Earthshaker. Nana on Witch Doctor. All that for Omakase. For Japan, Dota Rejects, 
We got QQIS uh, holding down the Juggernaut. Ume on Invoker. Evil, the Faceless Void player. Swagmaster on Enigma. And Monorita on the Vengeful Spirit. Monorita. Yeah, the Micromaster as we know it. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, so let's look at these lanes. Juggernaut against Earthshaker in the off lane. The block is going to be good with the Fisher. Uh, he's coming in early to see if he can ward, but unfortunately this feels really bad as an off laner. You want to get that ward up. But uh, Juggernaut ran out real quick to scout, and that's super important if you want to secure your safe lane and kind of get an idea. You can always catch where they place the Observer, and that's the important thing. Buying sentries, you know, that's, that's easy, but... You know, get it, actually finding where it is is important. So, <clears throat> even though in my opinion, the dire safe lane kind of area is still easier to deward than the radiant one because with radiant, there's a lot of places to put useful wards still even after the changes. And there's smoked up Enigma. He was just uh, maybe trying to. They were trying to just make sure that maybe they could flank someone at the bounty rune, um, but they did get alchemist his bounty rune, so he's feeling pretty good about that. Yeah, that works out for Omakase. Yeah, now this mid lane, yeah, we, we saw this matchup yesterday too. Alchemist versus Invoker. And Alchemist did pretty good. Maybe maybe I didn't we didn't see it yesterday. I definitely saw it on a stream. Maybe it was today though. <laughs> My days are all confused when I wake up this early. But uh, there is gonna be the IO in this lane. He's gonna be securing bottles for the Alchemist, which is important. So I kinda agree with this because you know, as Alchemist, you do, you care about levels, but you you anything you're willing to sacrifice levels to get extra gold. So Io showing up, stacking camps, being there for him when when he needs it is the important thing here. Yeah, it's definitely going to help him get in this game, get that cash money. Yep. That is what it's all about. Holla holla, get gold. I think that's how that <laughs> saying goes. It never gets old. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, but th honestly, this offlane in the, in the Earthshaker is pretty surprising to me. If I am a support in a safe lane against a solo Earthshaker, I feel real good, personally. Yeah, yeah. You know, Earthshaker yeah, isn't spirit, the tankiest. He, he's a strength hero, but he's not the tankiest, like, at all. And Vengeful Spirit, known for her pretty, pretty good right clicks, good attack animation, uh, able to deny really well, but they should be able to get a kill on Earthshaker with Blade Fury and the Magic Missile here. Yeah, just a matter of when. Yep. Total comes out. Eh, nice 93 damage on Mona Rita. Yeah. Just I mean, kind this of obnoxious, is... but you know, yep. really, you really want to trade. Yeah, it's uh, it's, this is what I do. They both have only one set of tangos in terms of regen. So, in the regen game, Earthshaker is probably going to win that unless you know, uh, mm -hmm. Vengeful is able to get a lot of poking at him, but. Urshaker has pretty strong enchant totems, and in a lot of cases, I actually level enchant totem in lane if I'm doing really, really well. Especially if the supports are looking to roam. If if the supports need to roam on the enemy team, you're one of you wanting against a melee hero like Juggernaut, and you can get huge enchant totems and push them out of lane that way. And uh, what level do you think uh, Juggernaut will be picking up that uh, healing ward, though? Yeah, that's a good point. The thing is, as an Earthshaker in the off lane, you're kind of just looking for levels. It, it, for the most part, unless you're having a really good lane, in which case you can rush your mana boots slash blink. But, uh, so it comes down to the scenario, but if, if Earthshaker is just looking for levels and he ends up rotating TPing to other lanes with those early levels, which is a pretty good move given how strong Earthshaker is and how strong Echo Slam is when the other team doesn't expect it. Uh, the, in that case, Healing Ward's really good to push the tower, get some easy gold, hop into the jungle. Uh, but I think getting early points of Blade Fury, yeah, is obviously the main thing here. He got the crit, so yeah, I'm a little... I think he wants to be able to trade with Earthshaker a little better, especially in, in the case that Earthshaker doesn't get enchant totem points early. So as Earthshaker's still kept down, he's able to trade a little bit better. And they're definitely looking for these early kills. There's the stun, the Magic Missile, as well as Blade Fury. It's still hitting him. He's on the edge of the, of the range on that. And there's the last auto attack for last Juggernaut. Time. We just got yes. that uh, that point into Blade Fury. Four Big levels. money going his way too. He's sitting on uh, 1060 gold right now. Already make that 1100. Yep. That is what I kind of. That's what I expected. You know, it's man. I like I said, it's very gankable, and uh, and you can't reply. Earthshaker normally, you know, he'd be yeah. able to Fisher stun, but you can't do that against Blade Fury. So. 
pretty unfavorable matchup there, but, you know, he's getting good levels. You know, it's uh, all if offlaner dies, still three minutes, three level three, three minutes in. And uh, not not the worst case scenario. Okay. And, uh, yeah, mid lane's going. Alchemist is getting his farm. He has 11 last hits against Invoker's 19. Uh, so, you know, he's getting contested, and uh, Invoker is definitely going that three points into Exhort. I, ca I agree with this. A lot of uh, Invokers don't go the early point into Wex, but I think having mm -hmm. Ghost Walk early, if not just to force the opponents to buy dust if they're going to gank you, right. uh, is pretty pretty good. This is, I'm glad to, glad to be seeing this. In the bot lane, looks like Faceless Void's doing some aggro jungling against the lane that uh, in, the, in the bot lane, and he was able to get a couple creeps there, just time walk on out. I th it's funny. It's like time. It's like Faceless Void became a lane hero like Viper, in that he just wins the lane uh, very easily, and then is you know still you know he's meh in the late game depending on how, what you build. Like he can be really good in the late game. Obviously, Chronospheres are amazing, but he's not as amazing, of course, at late game as he used to be. So relatively speaking. Uh, he's just a lane domination hero, and it feels amazing. Although OD's pretty good against him, I'm kind of glad they put the OD down here uh, because he, at least he can steal that int. You know, it's like you can you can rewind the HP damage, but you can't rewind that uh, that int steal. Yeah, JVR uh, have just been crawling out to a good money lead here with now Invoker suddenly taking over Alchemist as the second place in the net worth chart. They are uh, over two thousand. Um, point lead in both the uh, gold wars. Yeah, it's definitely a big lead there. Um, so far, you know, five minutes in, uh, they, looks like they dove Earthshaker in the top lane. I barely missed it. The TP support comes out from OD, doing, throwing some the hammer right clicks onto the Vengeful Spirit, but uh, not fast enough, not able to get anything out of that. There's the bounces. Will it bounce? It's the perfect paralyzing cask, actually. The last bounce does go back to the creep wave. Yeah. Slightly unfortunate there, but Bl Juggernaut does have Blade Fury, so I think he's going to be okay. Um, but uh, the IO showed up as well, and then I think if IO there was a little, little bit earlier, they could have actually made something happen. But uh, good attempt, good rotation. Uh, Moxie going down. Uh, well, maybe not going down, but they're they're fighting. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely a good uh, rotation for sure, uh, and able to scare him back. But like you said, not, unfortunately, not able to get the kill. Mm -hmm. Enigma in the jungle. Enigma in the jungle. Enigma in the jungle doing his thing. It's so crazy to me that the meta shifted a bit where junglers now, dedicated junglers like Enigma and Chen, go uncontested. There was a yeah. huge meta there where like, oh, it was like, oh, jungling is over. Because now, bounty hunters get picked, Rickies get picked or something, or anyone who can invade that uh -huh. jungle pretty safely. And uh, maybe it's because bounty hunter got nerfed, but I still think it's kind of crazy, you know? Other people would at least ward up his camps, right? They would do that, yeah, they'd spend right. that money. And so it's interesting to see that that doesn't happen as much. And I'm not just saying in this tournament. Pretty much in general, you'd see Puppy come out of the jungle with a with like a 10 minute mech boot, and yeah, they just like yeah. what 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 you do about this? I don't. There's no answer. <laughs> it's pretty good. Nigma yeah. being probably the, the fastest jungler, I think timing boost. Yeah, for sure. Uh, he does a lot of work real quick. Just his capability to make those extra spirits and if handled correctly. Yeah. Propagating more spirits. Yeah, dude. His influence propagates, as he says. It, I think it's, what makes him the best is obviously that demonic conversion doesn't just create uh, like creeps for you to kill the creeps. It kill. It gives you the gold immediately as well. It's like yeah. A, it's like a mix between enchantress and devour. In the bot lane, uh, it looks like Earthshaker was down here to oh. TP, and he ended up dying. Uh, I assume to a Chronosphere. Yeah, that's on cooldown. So he's able to get a solo pick once again. Faceless Void. Um, what you do is you wait for those the, the lucky bashes. You just sit there and you know attempt to right click someone, and as soon as you get that bash, you're like, oh yeah, it's time to kill. Right. And you throw that chronosphere out. Feels feels crazy. Um, yeah, so that's uh, pretty good. Once again, JDR not join Dota rejects. Japan Dota rejects <laughs> are uh, doing pretty good here, and they're pushing the top lane. Enigma rotating in doesn't need a big item. They see the opportunity, and they're going to knock down a tower for an extra 200 gold for the rest of the team. Yeah, it's definitely surprising uh, how much of a net worth lead they've uh, accrued over this eight minutes um, without that many kills on the board. Yeah, they, and especially against an alchemist too. The invoker has done well to secure farm. It, I'm a, honestly, I'm kind of surprised because alchemist doesn't have the best base damage. He does have a quelling blade and a stout shield or a poor man shield. Um, 
Not that the poor man shield helps him in terms of damage, but yeah, he had the IO there, and uh, oh, in the top lane, I just caught it. Vengeful Spirit able to get the magic missile last, almost last hit on that. She did have a DD at the same time. They they surprisingly caught uh, Earthshaker out. Um, looks like those phase boots make Juggernaut so fast. You want to get treads, obviously, for the extra damage, but phase boots sets made that kill happen. I, I almost guarantee, I didn't see it, but I guarantee that that kill wouldn't have happened without phase boots. So that's the difference, the phase boot effect. Yeah. With with the with the changes to phase boots and that they give you a more, bigger boost of speed over a shorter period of time means that it can it'll it'll catch you off guard more often now. Yeah, and that is uh, definitely something people don't expect. Here we get this tier two, nice and early for them. Nine minutes. Yep. Very quick. That's there you go. That's that's good Enigma play. He's gonna TP to the bot lane. He's like, all right, I'm yeah, showing next. up next. Yeah, exactly. And another one. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, but like I was saying, I think it's kind of. I mean, Alchemist is the top net worth now, but that's that's to be expected. I think he should be even more, given that they allocated two resources to the mid lane. I feel like he should be a little bit more. But now there's some stacked camps and probably pr pretty fortunate stacked camps in the shard golems. Two sets of shard golems. Each one of those is gonna. Well, actually, one set to which equals four of the creeps. I think. But. Um, yeah, so that's that's six creep camps just from one six creeps from one camp, which is really good for Alchemist. And so maybe he'll catch up. This will be good. That's their kind of saving grace at this point. OD did okay, you know. He's he's got treads. He's you know, eh. but Alchemist is the real the real factor here. So if he can get that early radiance or battle fury, Bot tower dead, ripping pepperonis. And. Uh, yeah, we'll see if uh, Alchemist with his invisor and he just picked up. Get something going. Yeah. He yeah, he's uh, going the full farm build. And Sunstrike st yeah. split the wickets on that one. Thanks, AC. And Yeah, uh, Fabia just kind of ruins that invis room, too. But he, he wants to take care of this stack, so. Yeah. I mean, yeah, what's he going to do? I mean, he didn't really go fighting build. He's He doesn't have any. He doesn't even have stun. This is where he really wants to be, and this is gonna give him his relic at least. Oh, oh but here's the Chronosphere, they find the stack. JDR shows up, uninvited, completely, did not RSVP, and there's a, gonna be a, a kill on IO as well with the Sunstrike setup. And uh, looks like Alchemist is gonna be able to get out just fine, but they allocate the Black Hole as well. And uh, it catches only one, but can they get a kill from this? Enigma took a ton of damage, there's the Meatball, it's gonna roll a little bit, but no Wex allows it to roll that far. Faceless Void gets the bash, goes in, able to get another kill, so that's a two for one as well as the interrupted stack. And uh, that was pretty good timing, but looks like Alchemist, you know, panic bot, not necessarily panic, but like he wanted to get uh, some of that unreliable gold, so he did buy the recipe. He's not going to get his relic, which means he's even more vulnerable now. But a Sunstrike goes down as an Echo Slam as well, trying to fight back, but it wasn't much, and uh, they just get a Sunstrike yeah. as well as a Blade Fury. Yeah, not too sure about the direct to radiance build on the uh, alchemist. There seems like that was their issue last game with the uh, outworld devourer, as well as just their kind of overall scheme was that they couldn't really engage, they couldn't really fight, they couldn't hang toe to toe, and they just kept trying to, you know, or just you know getting bulldozed over. And you're like, you you just have this natural instinct to want to fight because you know they're taking all of your towers. But yep. they, they just don't have anything going on, really, right now for Radiance. Yeah, and even their Ancients are being contested right now. Yeah. Not what you want when you're banking on the late game, which is, like you said, what they're trying for, the Radiance. Um, it is obviously the best item uh, with, with Battle Fury. I'm not exactly sure which one's better, to be honest. I know that they have different effects. Um, but as far as mathematically, which one gives more gold, I'm not sure. They did catch out the Invoker with Natural Imprisonment, and they are kind of grouped around here. But, oh, they get a stun onto the Vengeful Spirit. She replies with a Magic Missile on the OD. She's going to go down, down here. There was a Fissure. Didn't get catch anyone out right now. They are blocked by their own Fissure for continuing to get any kills. But they did get a kill, and that, and that feels good. Yeah, and it was an extremely quick Radiance. He has yeah. gotten there. Yeah, 12 minutes, fast. nothing to scoff at. I talked about that he maybe should have a little bit more gold, but hey, he only really missed maybe, I don't know, there was maybe 20 or 25 creeps that he could have gotten. But Invoker, you know, he's kind of he's pretty good with that amount of Exhort, so it's obviously nothing to, you can do about it. 
but it uh, looks like they are going to be able to catch up at this point, and the flash farm begins. And, uh, you know, they, like, like you said, late game, they're, they're banking on late game, they did it last game, they're doing it this game, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it uh, it can really can really have that effect. It's If you can actually free farm for a while, and uh, let's, I mean, let's look at the Ags thing, Ags effect. Uh, OD could get an Ags, eh, it's not alright in Ags, it's pretty good. Uh, Earthshaker clearly can get an Ags, obviously there's no Illusion Heroes, so it's not like going to be crazy crazy, but Witch Doctor with an Ags, yeah. that is a big effect. And that's one too that, you know, if you can get him a free Ags pretty early, oh, that yeah. it enables him to just like all of a sudden have like Glimmer Cape and, you know, like Forest Staff, and just like all these sort of uh, additional uh, helping support items instead of just having to like you know just like the oh, classic absolutely. hobby like I'm just gonna rush an ags on a support you know? yeah exactly and it just doesn't happen you get halfway yeah. there and then you just lose yeah you know and you, you need to be able to spend money on other stuff but obviously these upgrades do have a major impact and uh, ags for witch doctor is is certainly huge um an ags on Earthshaker would, would be welcome for sure in the late game um and we'll, we'll, we'll have to see uh, how things develop if they're going to be able to get that alchemist keep yeah. him rolling but here comes jug with an army he's doing a ton of damage yeah. oh no Oof. oh yeah io running in it's gunned down pretty much yeah he just yeah. finished the battle fury he didn't even have it till then Yep. Ouch. They had a they had big chase. The Enigma doesn't have Blink Dagger, but Invoker does. So this this is slightly uh un uh I don't know, uh unconventional to go Midas into Blink. A lot of people like to rush that eggs or or uh do something like that, but um but Midas, you know, that's gonna help combat that alchemist gold effect. And uh, you know, there you go. You, they need an initiator and Juggernaut just happened to be there quicker with those phase boots and he was able to get the Omni Slash off. Radiance so they're able to catch him out. Under Big rotations from JDR. They, they push the T2 and they save their tier 1. Yeah, keeping that Alchemist in check is going to be pretty important. Um, that's going to be their biggest obstacle uh, to uh, you know finishing this game off and asserting their dominance completely over the, yeah. the battlefield. Yeah, exactly. Well, this will be exciting. Hopefully, uh, we just watch this Alchemist ball out of control as he gets surrounded by JDR right now. Invoker's there first, and he has a Blink Dagger. That's not the person you want chasing you if you're Alchemist. There's the Blink. He actually goes across the trees, and Alchemist does a little bit of a juke. He doesn't have his his uh, boots to travel up, but he cuts oh, into wow. the trees. Did they see him? Can they? Okay, he peers in the lane, and I don't know. I don't think they were seen at all. This is actually amazing. Huge jukes. Holy sh Oh, man. That was actually great. Uh, yeah, that was awesome. They're gonna take Roshan though off the back of that. As uh, Alchemist able to, to duck, bomb, and weave, yeah. use that uh, boots of child to get away. But now he's on the other side of the map, and that Roshan very low health. Yep. He's gonna be falling any second now. That's true. That was oh man, that was that was a great juke. But yep, and unfortunately JDR is never never resting. They're always doing something, taking some objective, and this is a good sign of Pro Dota right here. This means you are. You have a good leadership. You have good uh, practice in terms of like synergy. You're, you're you're thinking together and acting as a team. You know, oh, there's the Earthshaker. Gets got on cold snap to initiate. They had vision of that with the ward right here. And uh, yeah. And Alchemist has decided. You know what? Like I'm not so sure how the Radiant Jungle feels. I'm gonna try the Dire Jungle. Sun He's gonna thrown on. Oh god. Oh, the relocate does, get does saved. work. Now the question is. Will Io try the TP, the EGM yeah. TP out in four, three? He's trying it too. I might be too early. Oh no, actually, that was someone else TPing. What? That was Witch Doctor, my bad. Uh, but yeah, Io just gets wrecked. Was that a. Uh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. You know, I, after I saw EGM do that, I was like, wow. I, uh, I didn't realize that was possible because I thought that the TP would be canceled by you relocating back to your original position. Yeah, it's one of those weird wonky things. Right. Right now, uh, QQ, uh, IS, 1S, gets uh, jumped on, but, uh, he's gonna be alright. Yeah. He just TPs to the top lane, doesn't even need to go back to base. And just top join us, homies. Yep. Where'd my crew at? Whoop right here, bruh. 
<laughs> yeah, they're rolling four deep right now with um, a faceless void in clear position, able to rotate over if needed. He doesn't have his ulti yet, but, you know, he'll be all right without it. Yep, there's the Fisher block. Uh, I like that. I do that all the time. Feels good. Sorry about your push, boys. But they're going to be just fine. They got a lot. Yeah, it'll, it'll resume. It'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> And Alchemist is showing up, he's not split, pu split pushing, which I think is the right answer because they need to be able to push this off. They cannot lose a Rax right here. Juggernaut loses Aegis pretty early, there's the Death Ward as well, gets a little bit of damage onto Invoker, and the swap comes in. Alchemist is in a bad position, but the counter, the Enigma, he goes in and catches the rest. A huge swap into a huge black hole, that's the T3 down, and a Rax to follow. Buybacks Ouch. from Earthshaker, yeah, and Alchemist. Ice wall might be catch Alchemist out, but luckily he's able to go around using that Quella Blade to its maximum potential. But that's the melee racks dead. Not much yeah, pretty about. insane pressure here as uh, this Folian going to go down, and they're just standing tall. They don't really care about what the Radiant side or what cost they have to offer. As here's another Chronosphere. The Sun Strike coming on perfectly on the Alchemist. Io in trouble, going to go down. Godlike spree for Umi. Yeah, that uh, that faceless void. One of these off laners is not like the other. And uh, yeah. if Earthshaker, and think about this. If Earthshaker had a blink, think about how that fight would have been different. There would have been. A, it's all about the initiation, and because they were able to get an easy swap. Oh, there's a little bit of engagement here. Cast goes out, bouncing doesn't get the best bounces, and uh, Earthshaker did go down to a sun strike. It looks like Invoker. Doing what he can. Satellite beams. And that's that's the second racks. But yeah, Blink Dagger on Earthshaker. If he had done well, he would have had a Blink, a blink Dagger by now. And uh, that might have changed things greatly because there's extra units there. Another swap comes out. Low cooldown with that Nether swap. Not going to be a kill out of it, though. Um, but they are going to just flex a little bit. Are they going to catch the Venge? They do have the extra movement speed from the IO. Oh. Is JDR going to re-engage here? There's an Ice Wall invoked on Invoker. He does have Invoke up. There's no Chronosphere, although Faceless Void's running in. There's the stun coming out from Alchemist on the Invoker. Radiance ticking. There's the relocate, and they just goes a little bit forward. Are they on the offense? Is this going to work out? They do have Chemical Rage rolling, but only for another seven seconds. And on, oh man, OD's getting caught out a little bit. He tried to wrap around, trying to get offensive, but it's not going to do anything. And the relocate actually ends up saving OD as well as the Sanity's Eclipse, doing a bunch of damage to Juggernaut. The Healing Ward is rolling. Alchemist though, he's getting hit by the Omni Slash. It's too many targets, but Alchemist ends up going down in the end. They grouped up, which was good, and they're chasing even more. Witch Doctor going down to additional right clicks, and uh, that's it. GG. Game 2. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Japan Dota Ajax absolutely stomping things tonight. Yeah. In, I mean, just dominating fashion, really. <sighs> Making it look easy. Yeah, and they had a solid lineup here. I like the Invoker, the Faceless, they got a hold of some solid heroes early on in the draft, rounded it out, played the Enigma masterfully in the jungle, great GPM on the Enigma, and then the Vengeful Spirit as well, just a very, very powerful hero, especially in the right hands, can contribute to the team so much, and uh, again, we saw Japan, or sorry, Omakase, Kind of have this lineup that's really geared towards a super late game and trying to hang in there. And that's how they won that game uh, that was a fantastic game early in their bracket against Sakana. But Japan Dota rejects just so much pressure early. No chance for Omakase. And well, on the bright side of life, they made it this far in the tournament until they lost a game. And uh, now they will be in the lower bracket. So mm -hmm. it should be interesting to see how they uh, pair up against the other teams. Uh, given that they were in the winner's bracket up until now. And once again, they they were the team that did the full int lineup yesterday. Yeah. As a, and th so what the, what Amakase appears to be is like this team that so far, as, as far as I'm concerned, don't really think about the laning phase. They have an idea and they go for it. Uh, it but definitely three of the three of the three drafts that I've seen are, are have something unique about them. So I got to give them credit. Trying, trying things new. Uh, doing what they think is uh, is the right move. I mean, Earthshaker offlane, it's worked out before, um, you know, but it's not meta, and I appreciate that. 
but JDR always picking something that can fight in the early game and make it to late game as well. They, they, they do a good hybrid value approach to early and late. And uh, so they, uh, they end up taking it, they make it look easy. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, I, I did pay the I did pay JDR to three two two this game so we could get three games, but it didn't happen. They, uh, oh. they they failed their contract, so I'm gonna have to send uh, <laughs> my my bouncer Jeffrey towards their their general direction. You gotta get, get on a flight, yeah, so demand, we won't get a game three. Demand your refund of those virtual. Items. Yeah, that was that's three hundred and twenty two shekels. Okay. <laughs> But all right. Exactly. Well, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. It's been a fun night. Um, more late night Dota from us is coming your way next week, late night, early morning. Eesh, all a matter of perspective. I had a LAN party, so this weekend it was like a late night kind of kind yeah. of deal. But uh, I think next weekend it's going to be an early morning kind of deal, which would be good because uh, uh, I'm excited for what we have ahead of us. We got the rest of the lower bracket finals coming the Saturday. Uh, two, uh, 3 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, and then on Sunday, 3 a.m. Pacific time, we will be having the grand finals best of three series. So, great stuff ahead of us. And congratulations to Japan Dota Rejects for their victory tonight. Um, thanks so much to my co-caster Next Level Dota for joining me. You can find him on Twitter at Next Level Dota and the Twitch twitch.tv slash Next Level. Any final words, my friend? That's it. You gave me a good plug. I appreciate that. And uh... Like it, like you said, just want to reinforce. Next weekend, be there, same time, three a.m. We will be streaming. Yeah, shout out to Japan Dota Cup 2016 Season One. All their organizers, admin people. Also, shout out to Myonix, the uh, sponsor provider of the gear for this tournament that is being used as prizes. Uh, I just picked up a Myonix mouse. I'll throw it on the stream real quick here, and I've been very pleased in the day and a half that I've used it very pleased so far so um give them a uh peep and uh definitely check us out uh for more japan dota coverage coming up next week that's it ladies and gentlemen thanks so much for watching uh, um on behalf of myself and next level dota and the japan dota crew we will see you guys next time saturday at 3 a.m pacific that's it ladies and gentlemen peace out peace.